We're down here at Barnsley, Long Ranger fuel tanks, the OG. Aaron's here with me, he's the designer of these tanks. We've got the Raptor up on the hoist. You guys know that I've already fitted these tanks to the F truck as well. Mate, it's a big tank. How many litres are we looking at here? Uh, we've got 140 litres here, so significant increase over the, the factory tank. So Yeah, it's, it's absolutely um, massive. We tried to design in the way, obviously, the, the Raptor's the, the type of car it is. Uh, we didn't want to, we tried to gain as much capacity as we could without compromising on ground clear and stuff like that, so. And you're just seeing good demand for these tanks for Raptor especially? Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, so it'd probably be, I believe it's like our second or third highest selling tank at the moment, so. Oh, really? Well. Wow. Yeah, so there's, um, there's a lot out there at the moment. They're, they've been going out quite, quite a lot. Is there any... So obviously the tank's obviously going to be bigger. So is there different spots where the tank actually protrudes into now? Uh, yeah, yeah. So obviously down along the side here, we're, we're limited by the tail shaft. Um, but we gained a lot of capacity by going higher. So there's a lot of room on top of the factory tank that's unused uh, underneath the, between the tank and the, uh, the floor of the car there. And then we, we relocate this electrical plug. Uh, it clips into another clip we have located onto our tank and it just gets that up out the way and allows us to come forward towards this cross member and then just to gain that extra bit of capacity without having, having to lower the tank too much we because this has a center bearing we're, yep. able, we're able to ex, uh, extend the tank out to the uh, to the side here underneath the uh, tail shafts a bit so that just helped us gain that capacity to get to 140 litres. Well this tank doesn't have like a, a guard and stuff like the factory tank? No, no, so the the structure of this tank is 2mm steel, uh, aluminised steel that is. Um, and then we're, we've got some, some baffles that run through the through the tank and they're strategically placed. But the tank itself is plenty strong enough and it doesn't need to, it doesn't need a bash plate. So it's, um, it's tried and tested, the same kind of design material, everything for, for a long time. So. Um, so yeah, we've never had any issues with structural strength and stuff like that, so the, the bash plate's just not necessary for this. So we'll jump under the Raptor here and we'll go for a bit of a gaze of the standard tank. Standard tanks, I believe it's about uh, 80 litres from memory. Pretty empty uh, when, yeah, we, yeah. when we drop it, so that's probably a point if you are coming to get a tank. Yeah. Don't have it full when you show yeah, up yeah. To, to get it done so I've yeah the fitters will be happy with that <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've actually only got i think about uh, 40 k's of range left in the tank yeah, yeah so. right so there, there shouldn't be too much in the bottom of that that'll um cut down the weight so that's the main thing when they're uh when they're full when they come to swap out is the it's it's more so the weight of trying to drop that drop that factory tank out and due to not having a drain plug or anything like that the um yeah, it's all got to stay in there when you're trying to drop the tank out of the vehicle. So would you recommend getting a professional to do this install or could um, you do this yourself? I'd, I'd highly recommend a professional. There's, there's, there's a lot to them. They're, uh, they're not as simple as what they used to be back in the, back in the olden days. So as the cars are evolving, everything, technology is getting more. So the, uh, the shape and the way, that, the way the tanks are working is uh, a lot more complicated these days. So definitely recommend a professional for for fitting one. Is there any modifications from the, the new tank, obviously, to the existing tank? Is there any mods that you need to do to the frame or where it mounts or anything like that? Or uh, no, everything? so we don't modify drill or anything like that for our fitment. So we pick up all existing mounting holes where, where we can and then any additional mounts that we have made, uh, they're picking up either a, a hole that's already in the chassis or we have a bracket that mounts to an existing point to, to give us our mounting point. So. We try to keep it that way, try and make the, the uh, no modification needed for, for fitment of our tank. I think uh, it just makes it a lot easier, quicker fitment as well. So, so yeah, so everything stays as per factory. Right, so Aaron and the boys are going to crack on and we're going to get this tank out, mate. Yep. And get this new one fitted up. I'm pretty excited. At least I won't have to uh, fill up as many times at the <laughs> servo anymore, so that'll be nice. Yeah, it should like, last a bit longer. I am filling up probably about twice a week at the moment, so yeah, right to be able to... Uh, Again, the Raptor is pretty much a daily for me, but I do want to look in the future of doing some trips, especially out to Fink and stuff yeah, through yep. the Simpson Desert. So, and I don't really want to carry fuel in jerry cans. I'd rather yeah, have it under yeah. the car. I guess with dirty jerry cans, stuff like that, you run that risk of dirty fuel yeah. uh, getting in while you're trying to fill up with the jerry cans. So, 
it's definitely easier just to have it all housed in the one tank. And then if you got all your gear in the back of the of the ute too, you don't yeah, want to. Yeah, you're pulling in and out, dirty fuel, smell. Yeah, all, that kind of all stuff. your gears all gross and whatever. So, yeah, nah. Let's get this tank out and we'll get this new one in. Pretty pumped. What's this big thing here on top? Uh, so that's the OEM carbon canister. Okay, what's so, a carbon canister do? Uh, so it just filters all the uh, hydrocarbons and emissions. It's, uh, uh, it's used okay, for gotcha. um, to compliance with all the emissions rules and stuff like that. So, yep. so all the, the entire breathing system that, uh, has to breathe through this carbon canister to filter out all the hydrocarbons and, and uh, before that can go out the atmosphere. So okay. uh, that's a... Um, that's a rule that I believe originated over in California. And I'll show you later. We add a um, we add an additional carbon canister because we are growing the overall capacity of the tank. Yep. So uh, the carbon canisters they are limited to a certain they're specified to a certain capacity of fuel tank. So yep. when we make the fuel tank larger, we've got to add an additional carbon canister just so we are still compliant with the rules. So it really helps the boys not to have your fuel tank full of fuel when you uh, come to get a new tank fitted. So that way it's a lot easier to, uh, to lift out. <laughs> it's not full, full of fuel, so sweet. So oh, yeah. this is the carbon canister on top here, and we're gonna move it over to the long ranger tank on this one just here. We reuse pretty much all of the uh, factory components. So the, the fuel system set up on this is as per normal, basically just with a, a larger fuel vessel. So okay. Um, so yeah, so we'll relocate all that. That'll uh, bolt back onto our tank before we put our tank back in. All right, so Aaron's gonna explain to us about the carbon canisters. So is this a serviceable part or it's just, this is just, it is what it is? It, it, this is what it is really. So it's not a serviceable part. It's just a part that's meant to last a lifetime of the vehicle. It's pretty simple the way it works. It's just full of carbon granules. So right. all the, um, all the like all the air that comes out so of the, the fuel fumes tank, coming all out of the, the fumes tank that and... come out of the tank, the whole breathing system runs through the carbon canister before it goes out the atmosphere. So the air just comes in, runs through all the carbon granules, and just back out, and that just filters out all the hydrocarbons. Um, and then because, so we've got another one here. How come we're putting a second one with this tank? Uh, because the capacity of the fuel tank is growing. Okay, so, so because, because we're growing the overall capacity of the fuel that we're, yep. we're going to carry, so we have to also increase the capacity of the carbon that we have to filter out all the emissions. So, so this one just mounts down the front of the fuel tank, and okay. basically it just gets plumbed in line. So, the the line that would normally go from this OE canister and just run up to the top of the filler neck, I believe and it's out through a little filter to atmosphere, we just tee our carbon canister into that line. So the way the system works is it comes from the tank through the OE carbon canister, mm -hmm. then through our canister, and then out to atmosphere. So, so it's a pretty simple setup, but it just makes sure we uh, abide by all the rules for the emissions and, and stuff like that. So Yeah, cool. No, well, I've learned something today about these things, so hopefully everyone watching today has learned something too about these, these canisters and basically just an emissions thing to yeah. capture all the fumes and stuff coming from the tank. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, sweet. So probably a good opportunity to show you guys the cavity of uh, where the tank actually came from before we put the, the new Long Ranger tank in. So there is a fair bit of room up in here for the new tank to go into. And the guys have obviously CAD drawn everything to go around the frame and, and maximize all the space that they have. And I just think this option is way better than having jerry cans, just in my opinion, but to be able to have the fuel under the car and not have to be filling up jerry cans, not having uh, jerry cans in the tub and things like that with all your other gear, especially if you're gonna do a long trip. I think that the fuel under the vehicle is your uh, your best cleanest option if you're going to use your Raptor for touring and things like that. So the boys are going ahead now and moving everything from the stock tank over to the new tank, all the different components and stuff that we're going to use off the existing tank and shifting it over to here. So all the breathers, 
all the carbon canisters and stuff like that. And I saw the boys have got everything uh, back on the new tank now. Got the carbon canister up here. Hopefully next year we'll do a Fink run. So I actually want to do a Ranger Raptor run out to Fink through the Simpson Desert, get a bunch of Raptors together. Hence why we are fitting the long Ranger tank today. So I do have that extra capacity to do a trip like that. Raptor run out to Fink through the Simpson Desert should be pretty sweet. The boys have all got it all uh, dialed in, sorted back. Uh, what do you think, Az? Yeah, yeah, no, it went pretty, it went pretty good, so. Like I said earlier, it's a, it's a pretty easy fitment, so we, we use a lot of pre-existing mounting holes. We do a lot of the work out, outside the vehicle before we put the tank in, so once it comes to putting the tank up in there, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Lift it up, uh, put a couple of fittings on, and uh, do all the mounting bolts up. So, it, um, yeah, it looks pretty good in there. You know, it yeah, feels I'm pretty a whole happy, lot I'm nicer. Pretty happy with it. It's got good clearance. I like this big taper here on the front yeah. of the tank too. Yeah, so. yeah, we try to ramp the uh, ramp over angle up to this cross over here so yep. uh, we just try to put a bit of a uh, bit of a chamfer on either side of the tank just to take away that kind of the the look there and it just gives it a bit of added strength so yep we got plenty of clearance for the drive shaft and everything and all our hoses and lines are back on she's all bolted up yeah yeah she's good yeah so all the filler and that's back on and from that angle from the front looks a bit different but from this side it looks really good so we're we're uh we're slightly above where the lower arms here are anyway, so looking good, I'm pretty happy. So if you don't know already, I've got a long ranger tank actually in the back of the F truck. So I got that fitted a couple of years ago when we did the big Simpson Desert trip in that truck, uh, just cause I didn't want to carry jerry cans and things like that. Fully Aussie made, these tanks are local company here to me and that's who I want to support every in every aspect I can on this channel is to support companies that I've known have been around for a long time and and that company is just yeah it's in my hometown it's here in Newcastle so it's pretty cool to support them and yeah just Aussie manufacturing in general just Aussie made stuff it's all laser cut it's all fabricated down there at Barnsley so that's a big point for me as well is trying to support these smaller Aussie companies that do make amazing products and they've been around for a long long time all right so we're back down here at long ranger we're going to try and calibrate the fuel tank we don't know if we can do it yet but we're going to give it a go to change the dte so that way distance till empty is correct on the dash so we're going to give forward scan a go and see if that works and yeah if not we'll just have to do old manual calculations i guess so we've got 80 liters on the tank we're going to change the value to one 40 and i don't know if you guys can see it on the screen but the sun's a bit bright but so we'll change it 140. now whether it stays like that is another question so the tank's pretty much completely full right now i've topped it back off this morning okay so we are two dollars 7.9 good old 98 going to be very expensive so uh please go to my website and buy some merch see how many liters we get oh now the algorithm the algorithm should work it out when i start driving in theory again i've spoken to ford engineers and i don't know it's kind of it's all shady around this stuff with changing the tanks in raptor so I guess I'll just have to drive it this week and find out and see what happens, but we've changed it in the system. It's right now it's saying 516 kilometers till empty, but as I drive the algorithm 
in the uh, computer will work that out. And yeah, it always self-evaluates. Yeah. So it will constantly re-establish, just like you would with an, a new fill-up. Should be good. Yeah, so we'll give it a go and let you know what happens after this week. So, but I've also set a trip computer, a fully, fully fueled the Raptor, completely topped it right off, reset the trip computer. I'm gonna get it um, all the way down to zero and tell you how many Ks I'm getting out of a tank just with average sort of highway driving around town, all that sort of stuff to work out an overall kilometers of distance that I'm getting, obviously running 35. So normally my average, it's like 15 per 100 with how I drive, but every day I drive, I'm kind of a bit crazy going in the driveway and jump and stuff. And <laughs> that's like every day. So could vary from customer to customer, obviously. Exactly. So as you actually change your configurations, uh, and reprogram it essentially, then you, you write it to these here. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I've also got these new shirts available on the website. Click the link if you want to grab one. So I've just used the foreskin to change the DTE distance till empty from 80 litres to 140 litres. So from what the forums are saying about Raptor, that may not stay, but I'll have to show you guys here towards the end of the week before I post up the video as to how the the Raptor's algorithm works with the fuel situation and if it's gonna maintain that distance till empty. Uh, so yeah, that's just something I'm gonna have to just work on and probably get back to you about that. So we've changed it. Now it's just a matter of cycling tanks of fuel and we'll see what happens from there, I guess. Okay, so I've been working out the calculations for the tank based on fueling up yesterday. So I'm, I figured it out that if I put 111 litres roughly in the tank, I had 50, around 50 kilometres to go, so that's probably like, my average is 15 litres per 100, so if I halve that, let's just say seven, um, seven to eight litres, something like that. So my guess is that you've probably got around 15 to 20 litres or something like that in the tank once you actually hit E, once you hit empty. So that'll give you just a rough sort of guide there once you do hit empty as to how sort of far you can probably go with what's remaining in the tank. The only way I'd understand that, well not so much understand it, but the only way that I'd figure that out better is if I got to zero and at that exact point took the bung plug out of the tank and drained what fuel was left and then obviously measured the fuel and then go, well, this is how many litres you got. But I'm guessing once you hit E around 15 to 20 litres you probably got left in the tank. So I'm gonna actually buy the foreskin uh, tool as well for myself because uh, there's some things I want to play with with the Raptor and see what else I can change in parameters and stuff. But all the distance till empty stuff's gonna really come down to what wheel size you're running as well because if you're running 35s you're actually traveling further than what you are on 33 so all that stuff comes into play so it's really going to depend how your wrap is set up to uh, as to what you're going to get as determining by the the fuel usage the way you drive and then also how far you're going to go I'm just going to drive it very average uh, for the next full cycle of fuel that I'm going to go through and give you guys an, an overall distance that I'm getting out of the Raptors tank based on being completely full at 140 litres all the way down to zero how many k's I'm getting out of it so 58 k's left till empty about 692 kilometres out of the tank so basically if you were going to stretch it you could push it to 800 kilometers, you'd get out of the tank. Um, I was gonna run it right down to zero till empty, but this is the last stop before I go home and it's about 100 k's till home from this fuel station that I'm at. So yeah, that 800 k's, if you really pushed it, I reckon, if you went past zero into that, say 15 liters of extra fuel you probably got in the tank. So I'll refuel now and we'll see if the distance till empty goes up since we changed the literage of the tank. I'll fill the truck right up. I'm 
gonna slow down a bit, filling this up, so it's clicking off at 105, obviously, because I've still got like 60 k's of range left. It's gonna creep it up a little bit more. So we're clicking off there at 106. 213 bucks for 98. So I put 107 litres in roughly, plus the the amount that I already had in the tank. The distance still empty hasn't hasn't changed, so I'll keep doing a few more cycles and I'll update you guys on Instagram through stories or something about the distance still empty. And if that does change after a few tanks of fuel. So I've been super happy since the install's been done. Everything on the tank has worked absolutely perfectly, but not just Raptor, the F truck as well has a long range of tank in the back, the custom one that was made for me to do the Simpson trip. So that tank's been running in there now for about two years, bit, bit longer than two years. So it's been really, really good. But yeah, the Raptor one's been great. Just got to figure out this DTE and try to see if we can get it to uh, yeah give me a good distance till empty. So I'll keep working on that, but you're gonna get about 800 Ks if you push it to the limit and drive very conservatively. You put 800 Ks of range out of the long range of fuel tank. So that's 140 liters in the Raptor. So I'll keep you guys updated. I'm gonna do another video on this in probably about four to six months, an update on this, on this tank and how it's going after I've been driving the vehicle, jumping it, all the rest of it. So stay tuned for that. So hopefully the video has been very in depth and giving you guys a full understanding of long range of fuel tanks and how these guys actually build their tanks and giving you any information that you're after before obviously purchasing one for your Raptor or any other vehicle you're looking to put one in. So I hope there's been plenty of information in there for you. If you've got any other questions, put it in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. So yeah, that's all from me and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you later.